in three, two, one. We think the operative word in this motion is and similar software, right? Because ChatGPT in and of itself is not that big of a deal. It's nice, it's fun. Uh, I, used, I made it anti-Semitic, had a great time. I don't think and that's really what we're talking about. It is mostly a toy at this point. What we're talking about is all programs that can generate text uh, using this technology, that can generate images, that can generate music in the type that ChatGPT can do, all of their architecture, all of their algorithms, we, don't, we, want, we know this thing represents a new type of software, a very effective and very aggressive type of software. We want to ban anything like it. When we say no public use, we mean the only people who can use this are governments and the people who created it to begin with. They cannot get given an API or give the product or tech specs to other people. That is the world we would like to see. Uh, we also assume that the companies creating them are probably very heavily regulated in this world because the government understands that this is dangerous. Two points in my speech. The first one, why this technology enables massive amounts of abuse. And the second one, why it leads to massive unemployment of medium-skilled labor. Uh, anything from opposition before I move on? Uh, yes. What yes. is the time frame of this debate? From now to eternity. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First of all, let's talk about abuse, right? Because as we can, as we can see, people already use this tool to create fake news, right? They already use it to imitate people, they already use similar type of, of uh, tools uh, to create videos, to create deep fakes of individuals. We think this whole category of things should just be banned. We think it enables horrible use on the internet on three levels. Firstly, when we're talking about fake news, right? We're talking now about articles and about videos that seem completely real. It is very difficult for us to say what was made by a person, what wasn't made by a person. They study us, they know what passes our filters, and when we're not suspecting, when you don't actually they look very deeply at it, we honestly just assume that things are made by humans, and so we tend to trust them. These systems have shown to be really good. We truly don't know if this, um, if this motion was made by the AI and by, or by the person. It doesn't matter at this point. It will matter when it's news reporting or when it's, when, or when it's election campaigning. Also, this technology enables us to create fake news on massive scales, right? We know fake news exists nowadays. We know uh, op is, trying, is going to try and say, oh, you don't have a uh, tipping point. It's all the same as it is now. But it's not, because this technology is ma it can, be ma uh, can be used on a massive scale very easily and is very cheap. And so, even if the first item doesn't work or the fifth one doesn't work, the hundredth one will. They'll see, people use this technology, just send massive amounts of data online, and people will eventually believe it. Even if they don't believe it, they simply lose trust in all news. Because you can't go article by article when it seems real and try and pinpoint which one are real and which one aren't. And we think this means people, because of the number of vectors, because of the believability, and because of the mass of text, people simply lose faith in news and as a whole tend to believe things we don't want them to undermine our, our democracy, creating election fraud, and ex exaggerating all the damages we see now. Secondly, we think this can be used to very easily harass people, right? Because right now, when people are harassed online, like on Twitter or on Facebook, what we do is we set up auto-filtering to try and prevent them. We try to block people who look a certain way from contacting them. This technology makes this impossible because these algorithms can very effectively learn what bothers people and what doesn't. When there is a lot of them, they can learn from each other and understand how to pass our filters and how to create things that will be ter that will be will create the damages without being caught. And even if something is caught, it only takes a few weeks to a few months for it to come back on and creating better deep fakes or better chat GPTs to further attack people. This means people can be affected with deep platform, right? By massive amounts of messages coming into their DMs, seeming real, affecting them emotionally, even if they understand on some intellectual level that it isn't real, because it understands what their, what's the, what their vulnerabilities are and create massive amounts of text on it. It can silence them by sending massive amounts of data and simply effectively deplatforming them, hurting people online's freedom of speech. Secondly, we think this can be used very easily to scam people, right? When this this creates very believable Nigerian princes that can be sent to everyone all the time. You get emails, you get messages, people asking you for money, people uh, looking like tech support to get your passwords. We think this again can hurt people who use the internet just for their own benefit. And so because this undermines most of the democratic institutions and can be very effectively used to make people's life online less safe and steal money from them, we think it should not be used. We don't know what kind of benefits OP are going to push to make this price seem worth it. Uh, at this point, I'd like to take a POI. Sure. sure. You talk about deepfakes. 
Where does the word deep fake come from? Any idea? No idea. I don't know what you're going with. You guys going wrong. Uh, secondly, about loss of jobs. As these things become better, as they become more believable, lots of people who now have jobs are going to be automated out. We're talking about writers, we're talking about musicians, we're talking about admin workers, but long term we're probably also talking about programmers to an extent because it can create crime. We're talking about lawyers, we're talking about all kinds of professions that are now medium to high skilled and are going to be lost. We understand that not everyone is going to be out of a job, right? We think that's unlikely. But we think there's a massive amount of people who are medium skilled, who can and will be in the foreseeable future, say a decade, a decade and a half, will be replaced by these technologies. These people are very unlikely to find new jobs for three reasons. Firstly, we think most lower level jobs were already lost, right? Most production, most manual jobs have already been lost to automation. So the only way to find a job is going up. Secondly, most of us, are not that competent, right? are, 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 don't have an edge over the machine. We, we work fewer hours, we're less effective, it is hard to differentiate out of time, our work from the machines, and so it is unlikely for us to compete with them. Clearly, moving up simply means you need to study more, you need to spend more money, you need to pre preemptively have a lot of ways to invest in yourself and your education to be better, and you also need to have some born trade, right? you need to be really smart, you need to be a very talented programmer. I mean, most people don't have that, and so most people, will, or lots of people, will find themselves out of jobs. Why is that so bad? Firstly, simply unemployment, people losing their jobs, people being miserable. Uh, just unrest from areas which have lost professions, which used to be beneficial, cost of living, cleaning, and all of that. Up might try and say, oh, this has happened before, right? When technology comes, people find ways to maintain and do it. Two answers on that. Firstly, that only happens on tremendously long scale. The average wage for a British worker during the Industrial Revolution collapsed to a level that was half of their the wage in 1850, collapsed to half of what it was in 1840, only to rebound in the 1920s. We think these three generations of loss are terrible. Secondly, this work is new, right? This fundamentally undermines our unique value as people. It is not simply a mean of automating. They will, by the time we learn to advance past them, will again advance past us, and so there's no way to catch up, and for all of these reasons, proud to propose. <laughs> I will begin my speech in three, two, one, and fake news and then loss of jobs and in general a lot of hobbies that human beings will have and uh, time to acclimate. Before that, one external rebuttal. Note the majority of OOO's case, as we have heard until this point, is simply about people see uh, the uh, AI more so deregulated more. Four external responses to that. Number one, I, as Nadav has already said, and as Irene already implicitly concedes to, people see this AI, specifically JGPT and other such tools, because they are not so advanced right now, because they are not so common, as toys. They see them as a way to which they can uh, j joke, they can laugh, they can make funny memes or uh, easy stuff. I'm not sure why people see this immediately as a threat. They might see the potential. But two, do you know where people see the potential far, far, far more? Is, for example, when self-driving cars will take over a lot of the automation. When Russian botnets who are currently used are currently being, uh, are currently being uh, used in order to, uh, to, uh, to uh, um, uh, like, uh, um, do a lot of fake news and a lot of problems when they actually see the problems regarding on that. To that extent, the addition of ChatGPT as a public toy is at best uh, not uh, moving anything in the symmetrical because people focus on the other stuff and at worst an actual smoke screen because right now people see ChatGPT which isn't that advanced currently and say oh it can be that advanced we still can write better find the specific flaws in the AI and don't see it as that big of a problem right now when, you, when compared to when you show them the actual self-driving cars and the far bigger problems but three regulation is only effective when you can catch up to what is happening in the market i.e. when research moves too far when the public is using it too much and research moves too quickly as we'll soon show to you and when there is too many actors using that technology for bad stuff I we do in fact believe that this stands into a, an, into an extent and uh, lastly note that on both sides want regulation we think that there are many reasons why regulation is at the end likely to happen symmetrically to the extent that uh, at the end you know bad stuff will happen uh, bad stuff will be used and will happen to the extent that that governments are stupid know that they're uh, that they're in power and that uh, they will have a huge problem to the extent that governments do hear about open GPT and that governments do hear about all of the information and the companies are stating that they have, we think that the question in this debate really is whether or not all of the bad stuff before the regulation can be placed, or whether or not the governments can even place that regulation in the first place, which is far more important than whether or not the public are going to support regulation, which is likely going to happen on both sides. Let's enter that. What does making this uh, type of software and architecture public actually do? Two things. One, it enables a lot more actors to use it. 
Note, we don't think that the number of actors that are uh, being used matters that much to their publicity, because when the Russians do it, there's enough of people to see Russian interference and bots and uh, all of that as a huge problem. Be, uh, it's like uh, you get diminishing returns on the amount of people using it as bad uh, for uh, humans in order to realize that it's bad in the first place. You can only see like one, two examples, and humans already know that it's bad, so we don't need it massively spammed in order for people to do so. But it is far harder when every single Joe Schmo can uh, use ChatGPT, can use all of that in order to uh, take control of them. Note, here uh, Yarin tells you, oh, but today you need an open AI account to do all of that. Note, the problem is that we're talking not just about specifically open AI and ChatGPT, but also about similar technologies, about architecture, about the pre-trained models that OpenGPT, that open AI has actually released to the public in full that you can download right now on your computer and use, which are very useful in places such as Twitter already, which are likely in the near future to become far better, and this means a lot more spam, a lot less inability to regulate, and a huge problem there. But secondly, it is the fact that you have far less research, that you have far more research on our side, because of the fact that when you release it to the public, a lot more public people do research for their own uses because of the fact that a lot of companies, which I'm sorry, not every single company because it has a lot of money, has the technological expertise to develop and, and coach further on the AI and research on it, but once it actually has the technology released to the public, once the public can access it far more, it can now put its resources into developing it more. It has the fact that uh, there are more leaks once uh, the research goes out and is, and is capable for the public to get the information far better. You get a lot more people using the technology, a lot more people probably working on it using tools such as transfer learning, as in using their models and like transfer and using the tools of learning just to transfer the model into other areas, like creating a model which is specifically to create chatbots from the general chat GPT. You can get a lot more research into that point, so therefore it becomes a lot more uh, regular, and therefore it becomes a lot more research, and it's a lot harder for governments who generally tend to be slower on uh, regulation, slower on learning in information, slower on legislation, in order to actually cope with that. On our side, we have far more effective regulation, regulation that is far sooner, because people are going to realize the problems, you know, when AI do so, but not when, uh, but not, uh, but not when the entire free speech is subverted. One last thing on that. Note, this case is logically proud to the question of regulation simply because of the fact that it's likely that people who are using fake news will also use fake news in order to oppose regulation or in order to make regulation which is ineffective, like um, uh, promote methods of regulation which aren't uh, being used correctly or in order to say that regulation is all just a big government conspiracy trying to take away our AI, spam it everywhere because they have an active interest to do so. So this means that regulation is far, more, is far less effective and happening in their world at the point at which there are far more technology which is being far more actively used um, aggressively. So. Um, can I take CO? Yeah, getting the programs outside will help generate more programs that will be able actually will be actually able to prevent the thing that you are talking about because oh. they will be able to Oh okay, so on defensive AI you're correct or oh, oh, also mentioned that to, to be fair. The problem with defensive AI is twice. One, it is the people who are using defensive AI aren't uh, like defensive AI training is very different from offensive AI training. As in, you need completely different data sets of, of, uh, of, uh, AI, of uh, generated results, you need completely different models in order to do so, and you need completely different work to do so, so we aren't sure that it happens, especially when, for example, a lot of the data sets can still be gathered by the fake, by the far smaller amount of fake news networks that are likely to still exist in our world. But secondly, it is the fact that the people who are doing that research are unlikely to be Joe more because there is no like money incentive for big companies to do so when compared to the incentive that they can have when they make all of the money and when they and when they use the offensive AI to target people creating defensive AI is far less profitable and far less useful the people who are creating it are usually research labs, usually government funded which is likely to be symmetrical and uh, they know the entire public commercial thing means that they can access uh, the, the necessary models on our side one last thing about unemployment no the problem here again is the amount of research that is being done and the large shock that is going to happen to the economy to the extent that they, the AI is now replacing the most basic things to us human a job. What couldn't be replaced until now, which is our minds and our ability to, uh, to uh, control things such as code, such as machines, to, uh, to actually be able to express uh, our natural language and ability, there is going to be a huge shock if this development in AI research accelerates quickly, that a lot of people are going to get fired and it's going to be very hard for governments in order to get it in place, to regulate that. Problem being in this case specifically, is simply just the fact that you are going to have a lot more unemployment in the past. Governments are going to be a lot harder in in order to actually manage that, in order to retrain people, in order to find people for the, uh, in order to find new jobs for them. If this would be going on a long time, we could, for example, work to change the culture of society so that welfare would be more accepted and not working will be more accepted. And hobbies will be more accepted. We could transition it into creating new jobs for all of these people just far slower. It is simply the fact that on our side we get far less resources, far less use of this AI, and that companies can acquire it far harder than when the AI is publicly released, that this becomes a lot slower of process and therefore a lot more regulated, a lot more controlled, and a lot more easier for governments to do. Therefore, we prevent people falling into poverty, we prevent massive shocks into the economy, and for all of these reasons, very proud to propose. Thank you very much.
welcome our new robot overlords, and that's good because we have no choice and they're coming regardless. We think OG's insistence on the fact that somehow we slow down technology because the public isn't using it, when the same leading corporations still have this technology, and as they analyze, there is massive incentive for everyone else to try to develop this because it literally means you don't need workers, you can do, like they tell us, all sorts of amazing things. So we think these things are going to be developed by those with the technology, regardless, the question is just how much access and therefore knowledge the public has. I'll give you one point on just the really, really positive use cases that we have for this technology, but most of it will be rebuilding and rebuttal integrated together to explain why we just think that the farther ahead the technology is of our own recognition, the less control we have and therefore the worse conditions are for the average person when technology takes over. So, let's start with what we get from OG when they tell us that these things are only going to be like the government and the companies who develop them. So Yarin already explained why that's probably not the motion. But even if for some reason you buy that it is the motion, it is critical to note that at the point they, and they analyzed to us why it is so critical to have these things, why they can replace all of your workers and they cost nothing, obviously every news agency, every government, and every mid-level tech company will put their resources into developing this, at which point we think we're getting that development regardless. Now, they try to tell us Okay, oh, and then they talk to us about deepfakes. Here's the, P the POI they didn't understand. Deepfakes is the, this random Reddit user's name who, from his mother's basement, developed deepfakes that fooled the world. Why did it work? Because no one knew of the technology. That is to say, if it were developed by OpenAI, people would not have been fooled. It worked because nobody knew that this technology existed except for this one guy sitting in his mother's basement. We think that when we don't want people to be fooled and harmed and harassed and bullied and all of the things they tell us by this technology, the best we can do is make sure that people know of the technology, know that it exists, and understand the likelihood that this is what's happening. Because we think it's very, very naive of them to say, oh, well, it's only like massive corporations and shady government organizations that have it. Probably they're really nice. We think those are exactly the groups that are well known for massive abuses of power, and we think abuses of power are just so much more likely when people don't understand what they're up against. We think that when these corporations try to develop an algorithm to make you addicted to something, as they've all done, when they try to make sure you buy as much as possible, we think when we're talking about technology that increases the ability to change your mindset tenfold. We think the best defense is to understand that this is a technology and how it works. We think the point at which you actually believe humans are explaining all of this to you, the point at which you believe you're really being bullied into buying this product or acting this way or whatever exactly it is, that is the point at which you fall for it, you are harmed significantly more by all of their things. We think people have the right to know, and that is what's going to save them. Then they try to tell us, oh, well, this doesn't help people prepare or get, re get ready for saving their jobs because people see it as a toy, not a threat. We think it's not mutually exclusive at all. We think this has started major discussions about AI and its development. We also think, yes, if there are more advanced things that we can see, we're happy with those to be open to the public too, right? We don't understand why they try to tell us, oh, it's everything, but no, never mind, it's just the toys, right? We think this is exactly what has gotten people interested and in people to realize how significant this is and that we need to have discussions about it. And then when they try to tell us that the real threat is things like automated cars and bots, note that this is just wildly uncomparative, because it's not like we see those on one side of the debate but not the other. The question is whether or not we have early exposure now to the development of this technology as it happens, or we are blindsided. And note, we think this claim of we're going to be blindsided a little bit later doesn't hold any water from them. They try to tell us we get a little bit more time, but note two absolutely critical things on that. Number one, two more years where we're not preparing for it doesn't help in the slightest if we all lose our jobs, and they give us no analysis on why we're going to be prepared in those two years or why discussions start until the point where it's too late. And secondly, we think specifically these things that are on the border of being toys, that are interesting enough to start the discussion but are not yet the point at which we've all lost our jobs is exactly when we can have this discussion, but when these corporations are not already so invested and so developed that they are going to prevent any sort of reforms. Now. When they tell us you don't need like any account for the software and the defensive training is different, so no, 
this is not only spec knowledge, but it's actually spec lies, right? We think it's funny that all four of the speakers in top half are computers people, but fundamentally, what happens here is that you need the same training data for defensive versus offensive, but more than that, we think even if they tell us, well, you don't need an account, it's gonna be all these companies, the leading companies are always the ones who do the cybersecurity and defense simply because there's more money in it, simply because everyone needs that. That's why every computer you buy has already paid for defensive software. We just think obviously OpenAI and companies like that are going to be on the cutting edge and they're going to be working on defense. And let's just point out as we get into our points, they massively misrep us when they try to say, oh, it's just about regulation. Nope. We think massive legislative changes in terms of what we do when people no longer have jobs are crucial. Because we actually think it's great when human beings no longer need to work or no longer need to work nearly as often. The question is, how do we make sure that that situation is right? We think the way we actually do that is by making sure there are discussions about things like UBI, about the ability to lead to a future where we don't need these jobs in order to have money where we transition into a better society. And yeah, we think the industrial revolution is great. We think the more discussion, the less likely we crash in the interim. Sure. Oh, never explains how normal people knowing of the technology helps them defend themselves. They also never say at one point do they want to stop the technology. If they seem to want to stop the next iteration or the one after that, we're not sure what the difference is here. Okay. I don't understand the thing about when you want to stop the technology, but as far as the average person knowing, yes, the average voter who is more aware of the fact that AI is coming for his job is the voter who is more likely to listen to a politician who has suggestions about that. The more popular it is, the more discussion there is, the more likely we are to get to a point where people actually care. But more critically, we just think you're more likely to be aware of it. The best defense against any of this bullying, against any of these tactics, is merely to know what these tactics are. We think we get that on our side, and Yarin already explained all of that. And now let's just talk about the use cases. We don't need much of this because we already win just on that clash, but to be very clear, we think it gets rid of the boring 80% of your work, right? It writes your emails, does the boring things, meaning human beings can focus on the creative aspects of their job and actually take things to the next level. We also think if you're a scientist, it synthesizes the articles and things you don't really know. It's Wikipedia only a thousand times more more successful because it actually, you tell it, here's what I need to understand. It allows you to understand. We think the learning capacity provided for this, aside from just the entertainment and the help we give to lonely people who have someone to speak to, we think the learning capacity, the ability to know what's coming, the ability to synthesize material so I can get already to that 20% of being creative of my new invention because I understand everything going around, that happens so much quicker and that is not just massive corporations, that is individuals. We think for all these positive use cases and because it allows us to prepare for our robot overlords, please oppose the motion. Okay, we thank the speaker very much, and the on the Mendel government. <laughs> important to start. I'm okay with being recorded. <laughs> I would rather not have my name appear in the YouTube channel or anywhere in textual searchable format. You will, but hopefully not everybody else. Okay, but after that, that will not stop the overloads. <laughs> that will not stop any overloads. Yes, I'm going to start in three, two, one. We are going to give you one main case in this debate. We are going to show you why the AI will make systematical and structural mistakes and why these will A, do significant damage in key professions and B, perpetrate biases that already exist in our society. But before that, I want to do two things. I want to do some rebuttal on some framing. Let's start with some rebuttal to what we heard from O. O is basically telling you we need this in order to generate public discussion about this. I would like to note that A, you need things that are exciting in order to generate public discussion, but toy models aren't the only thing. We had the Terminator movies, we had Black Mirror, all these things is, we create a discussion about future AI and what can happen, which work just as well. We have popular media and journalists covering it with much better understanding than the general public and explaining what the possible outcomes could be, which is much more exciting. And on some level, not knowing something and not having access makes something more exciting than it would otherwise would have been. We are not sure why they have such a significant level that their extra excitement they are providing is what's going to push us over the edge. 
But let's leave that. Let's do some framing because I think the key thing we are hearing is coming at the end of Menachem's speech. I think this is the likeliest trend. What's going to change is this is going to replace Google and Wikipedia. This is going to give you the answers. Why is that? Because it's so, so easy. You can just rewrite your question however you want it and get an immediate answer. You don't need to search. You don't need to adjust your terms. You don't need to try and find it in a very complicated fashion. I think this is the likeliest method for people to use it right now. Maybe in some uncertain future it will replace all the jobs. We are not completely sure what jobs this is replacing for first off, so I can't really compare away against that because I have not a clue what jobs are going to disappear. But let's pretend there are some jobs because opening government said that and we have to believe them. Uh, okay. But let's understand why there are going to be structural mistakes in what the AI does. Okay, so let's understand, first of all, what fundamentally the AI does. Fundamentally, the AI looks at all that it had, about what things were next to each other online, and tells you, okay, what was next to things that are similar to the question you are asking me. This is the fundamental structure of all these AIs. And if somebody wants to tell us that one day in the future they will develop new AI, we can talk about it. But for now, as long as the AI does this, it has a very basic problem. It has a significant difficulty from the differentiating accurate from close. That means that if you ask it a question about Hobbes and Locke, it is likely to give you the views of the one or the other because they all appear in the same discussions and it is very difficult understanding what is the key thing that is the difference maker here and it's going to keep finding answers that are close but not fully accurate. But more than that, it's going to maintain all the biases that the dataset already has. Because it's learning from Wikipedia, because it's learning from Google, it's going to keep every single error that we have in the human knowledge database right now, it's going to keep repeating it to eternity. And the more AI we get, the more it's going to be studying from things it produced in the past. Because more information is better, you want to study from all the information available, you want to study from everything produced by any other AI that ever existed, you're going to be perpetuating it significantly into the future. It's going to be very hard to produce enough correct information to uh, replace that information and compete with that information. I think more than that, we have a basic problem with the entire way this AI works, is that the AI doesn't actually have, isn't actually measured by its accuracy. It's measured by how logical it is to human beings, because most people are going to be asking this question, are not going to afterwards go and check that this AI is accurate, because people are lazy, because people do not want to make an effort, because people are going to get few accurate answers and assume all the rest of them are going to be accurate as well. And the AI himself is incapable, no matter how many warnings you're putting, it's incapable of checking it's actually accurate because it's just a statistical machine. And it's going to be wrong some percent of the time, no matter if you think it's going to be wrong only 10% of the time, it's still going to be wrong a significant percent of the time. And this is very difficult for people to use. Okay, before I continue, sure. Uh, yes, the comparative to me asking the AI is me Googling it or searching Facebook, which is already recommending content and giving me the first search result by an AI and with you. the same problems. Please note that there is significant difference here. When you go to Google, you know that you are searching for information from a particular source. When the AI gives you an answer, it answers your questions. But more than that, Google, you can't just type any question you want and expect to get an accurate answer. You know you need to find the correct search terms. You know you need to find, you need to search the information and try and understand. When the AI, you're just doing it as a chat machine. That makes it much, much more easier, much more accessible than Google is right now, but also much, much more authoritative, as we've already had consensus in the first part, that you're going to have a much, much more authoritative structure because the fact it just giving you an answer and not giving you a list of results to search from, not giving you a list of sources of possibility, not uh, giving you what its initial statements are and what its leaning is. Now, let's understand why these structural problems are going to be significant and how they're going to affect people. Because let's understand that every working person is now going to find it uh, it's going to find it very easy to use this in his trade, as opening a position already considered for 80% of the boring things they are doing. So when you have a lawyer or a judge or a, even a journalist who has to write a news report, he's going to find it much, much easier to go and ask them, what is the precedent that we have? What news do we know about this thing? Do we have an example for something like when you need an example for a debate or anything else? It's going to be the easiest and the most useful source to use. You're not going to double check it because you're just going to get an immediate well-written answer that suits your needs and probably uh, stylized to work for you just as is, just textually. You don't have to work and you can just use it. That means that you're going to may use this and it's going to seep into significant decisions because people are just going to use this for whatever they're doing. It's going to take all these biases and all these mistakes and bring them into things like law, into things like medicine, but just into the way people make their everyday decision. It's going to affect all the things significantly because it's just a generalized chat AI. This is not some specialized thing developed for a specific company that is well tested or has policy regression. It's a generalized chat AI that's meant to answer questions. And this is the correct use case. So it's not going to be regulated out because the use case for chat GPT is people asking it questions, is people going in to look for answers. 
And because of that, that's going to be fundamentally something that's going to stay structurally true to ChatGPT no matter what case you are using. And let's understand that this is going to have significant harm to a lot of populations in the country. First of all, it's going to have significant harm to the people who are uh, getting wrong answers to questions they're asking, the questions they want an answer to, if this is from something about how to fix their car or how to text, check things, it's also going to give wrong answers to people who want to know things about whether they're doing something illegal. A lot of people who are going to small courts, etc., don't have a lawyer. And even if they have a lawyer, the, way, uh, the lawyer itself might not have time for them and just use this to try and get a quick answer and produce something that's wrong. And that's not only is this going to be a problem because it's going to make a mistake, it's going to be a problem because it's perfecting the biases we have today in society. So if we have problems of racism, of sexism, of anything else, in a society, and if we don't have them in English words, we have them in words that are speaking smaller and less significant languages that have more existing biases right now, and it's going to be perpetrated into the future. That means that these biases are going to be continuously used in all those texts. It means that when you are going to use specific names or specific cultures, you are going to get a different type of text and different type of answer that reflects the reality we have right now, and this means that there are going to be judge more harshly in many, many circumstances. If this is from evaluating the job review because you're going to give the AI the job application and tell them, tell me how good this candidate is, if it is from uh, whether the, how they're going to be judged in front of a lawyer or any other circumstances, and for all of these reasons, we think we have to oppose the general use of value GPT just because of its ability to uh, increase, introduce mistakes and perpetrate biases in today's world. Thank you. Okay. אדם חכם אתה. זה סוכר. אני מבקש שחברת השקה לא יצלמו. אל תשים אותי אוכל. לא אהבי בדיוק. כמה יש לך לך שקר את זה? start in three, two, one, go. We are going to win by two ways, by two things. The first case would be why there is unproportionate and convincing power for private sector and government, and this is directly engaging with all the room. The second case would be why there will be armed to chance for social mobility and small business arm, and another arm that's also winning the debate. Before that, external rebuttal. So we are now for CG that now there will be bad accuracy and bad biases and etc., etc., etc. We think the main problem in their case is that it's not comparative. And I'm not going to give three comparatives that are more likely and why there is no change in their side. Firstly, we think only to, also today there is a lot of biases and inaccuracy because the newspaper owner's incentive is not to give always like the, new, the, the nice one or not biased information and all these things. Secondly, we think like the comparative for accuracy is Facebook. Friends and other things. When you don't have information, you ask what is it for you to get. It's meaning you are not going to go to get it for a professor now. It will be more accurate. You just don't, don't going to not have information. It's much worse than having an accuracy. Secondly, 
Thirdly, we think that now they're using Google, as they say, and we don't, and there are just no new answers. What is the pro, what is the difference between the private sector because Google is going to use it anyway, and the public sector that everybody can use it by their own. This is what the case is, is not comparing. Let's go for the first case. Why is unproportionate convincing power for private sector? We need to understand that we already accepted in the room that what is important is that the people will be informed through things. So we are going to show you that they are going to be informed in not good things in their way, in, in better things. In our way, we are winning this debate. Why it's happening? And this is the nuance in this motion, private and public. Because private, in their world, only private company and, and the, the government would have the power to use this tool. Meaning, small businesses, public, social movement, like small social movement, don't have this power for using. This is meaning all the information you are going to get, the more convincing and the more accurate and the more all those kind of things, will come from the government and will come from the private sector. Why we think specifically here it's more convincing? Firstly, as the, like visually you can make it more convincingly. Secondly, for example, in African country, for example, where people don't need, uh, don't know how to read, you can use this kind of uh, tools to make like something that writing verbal and then try to convince. And small companies and businesses can use to make like a sentence sense to be verbal because African countries don't know. So you can be more convincing, like approach more people, but like translate your information to male language. And then therefore, because there are a lot of places, there are a lot of like uh, small languages, I don't know, Nivim, how we say, it, and therefore you can't like approach all the people together. So we think that by translating and building more co and convincing and, and etc., it means that most of the information we're going to go get and most of the convincing information we're going to get will go through the government. For example, the government that try to support specific agenda for a public for against immigrants or, or uh, uh, for immigrants, against LGBT or for LGBT. In the comparative, here the same tool like the LGBT community have, the same tool also like the poorest people in the world have and can try to change and convince other people. The unproportional convincing in our side, they will get more good and accurate things and not only for the say, like part of the art. Let's go for the second case. Why we think it's armed to chance for social mobility and armed to small businesses? Like, we need to understand that the difference between using privately and publicly also, that publicly meaning free, meaning free, meaning that all the people can use it. Not only the rich people, not only the big businesses, also the small businesses, also, also the, like the businesses that have only a small website, also the business that all those kinds of business. What is meaning? Two mechanisms why it's better now for mobility. So let's, let's start from better way to learn. Because I will say, oh, it's better way to learn. Why? Because you read more, more things. But let's understand what we're talking about. So two things here. Firstly, language, because a lot of the information is in English, so meaning like a lot of people just can read it and can't approach it. And the translate that is not based on AI, AI can't like translate rightly for other languages. Meaning now that if I'm living in Africa or living in Asia or living in all kinds of stuff in South America, now I have access to information that I haven't done before. It's meaning I can learn myself to, to write a code, I can learn by myself to be, I don't know, uh, other professions are there, and all those kind of things. Meaning that I have more chance for mobility, I'll take you in a minute. More chance for mobility and doing things in the world. Then, secondly, it can match personally, because, for example, I can do things specifically for children. How to write, it, write, a send, write an article that is more understandable by children, and more understandable by specifically Indian that believe in God and can give you example of God and stuff like that. It means it's much easier to learn, much easier to get information, for people that don't have it. So we're talking about the poor people, we're talking about uh, the people without access to any of those kind of things. Thirdly, uh, we think it's a better way to be exposed because now you can write papers, we can talk with other people, you can ask questions because of this translation and then expose to other people. Thirdly, we think it's armed to small businesses. Because of the same reason as before, the unproportional power. It means the, bi the, the private businesses will have much more convincing power, much more advertising that convincing other people, and the small company in their world don't have it. Because they can use all the data, what people like, what people more attracted to, to and all those kind of things. This is meaning, uh, I will take POI from first. 
Less spam means easier regulation and fighting the existing bot networks. Personal citizens aren't always good and can be trolls or spread fake news. We don't understand why they're necessarily better than a government that is fighting all of the bad networks okay. better. But we showed you that there will be fake news just only from the government and only from the private sector. Many of the fake news is like a big corporate, like media corporate. A big company is Facebook, Google, Apple. This is many of the fake news they're going. Governments, like governments are trying like, like, to hide the, th the bad things in their, they're doing in their country. This is the fake news in your world, in our world there will be something against it, you can be more convinced against it, and etc, etc. So, the third point we brought was like arm to small businesses, because now when you can't compete with the big businesses, because you can like use like the Manifi uh, you can use the advertisement they use in, that are convincing like them, and, but you also, uh, uh, one second, don't understand why what? So you can use the advertisement and you can use many of the tools like they say, like the other tools, optimization, like you, knowing if the people that go to my website are going to buy it or not. You know, those kind of things. So to conclude, we think we already win like from the first one, this all debate by explaining why it would be like worst information, more bad news, and bad news specifically bad from the government and stuff, and in our world it would be more balanced because in both world, both world we have like bad news, in our world it would be more convincing for both sides. And secondly, we explain why it's out of like, mobility and stuff. Thank you very much. Two clashes in this debate. The first one, the effect over the expression power of, of the people, it's mostly between first uh, government and us. Second, the second uh, clash is the actual uh, impact of uh, uh, the mobility of people, I put inside it the, the jobs, the, the mobility we are talking about. Before that, I want to uh, uh, say that I agree with Dror about the public visibility and regulation. It's probably going to happen in either side of the house. Sooner or later, I don't think that there is a huge uh, uh, change uh, there. Uh, uh, I think like the, the, uh, we need to look at the impact itself or the effects it's going to, to, to make on uh, actual people to decide uh, uh, who in this uh, debate. Let's start with uh, uh, the first question. All of my uh, rebuttals are going to be uh, inside. So, the effect over the expression power. What do we do? So, we're from uh, um, two sides of the story. The first one is just a, a huge increase in fake news, in harassment, in scam, uh, uh, all of those things. I think that uh, some of it was already answered uh, nicely by uh, first uh, opposition that um, we did good. Um, that uh, it's probably already happened today by countries and by uh, uh, um, private uh, uh, sector. I think that uh, my partner gave the, uh, the important addition here yeah, that not only that it's happened there, but we need actually to allow the communities which are going to be affected by that, the way to actually defend themselves, to oppose to this government and uh, uh, companies um, trying to change their mind, trying to uh, uh, harm their uh, uh, autonomy, trying to harm their self-definition def uh, by actually arming their self-defense. Uh, we think that it's an important uh, part of this day because it's actually explained to why we must uh, uh, send it outside, why we must uh, make it a problem. Uh, uh, public use. But more than that, I want you to, to notice that even when uh, uh, Google search was uh, uh, created, yeah, it was more likely for me to find fake news. Yeah? When uh, uh, Google Transit, uh, that uh, Gmail happened, it was more likely for me to get scams in. Yeah? All of those things, all of this technology still uh, 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 like created the same harm that uh, first government tried to talk about, but we still uh, have them and we think they are better. Right? Because they actually allow the people to express themselves. They allow the people to find themselves in the world. They allow the communities to find other people that believe in the same thing. They allow them to express their uh, 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 belief. Even if we have a bit more fake news, we think it's more important for them to actually be able to defend them because the things are already going to happen. We need some more for them to actually explain what they believe in and, 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 what, are, and what they are doing. This means that we are actually winning uh, this uh, uh, clash. But more that we think that it's like the more likely uh, uh, answer for them is just that people are going to just become more educated to move to focus on good news sites. Yeah? They will know to listen to the economists and not some general Facebook uh, or Twitter person. Yeah? We think that if they learn that there are a lot of fake news, they are going to shift to some uh, 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 proper uh, uh, place. This is completely going to reduce the amount of uh, uh, things that are going to happen, and about the harassment and the scam, I think we uh, already answered in, in the period that we are going to get programs that are going to actually solve this, are going to sell them, they will understand what bother me and what not, they will remove it, they will uh, 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 learn uh, to identify uh, uh, GPT uh, text and just remove them, we don't think that that's uh, such a big problem, we think that the huge problem there is actually the ability to uh, oppose to those uh, government and companies that try to change my mind. Good. Second clash. 
about the actual effect uh, over people. So, oh, l let me phrase it again. The effect of the daily life. So we had several things. There. We had uh, f three things. So first one, we heard about people losing their job. Second, we heard about uh, uh, people make mistakes and, and become unprofessional from, uh, from the closing. And we have our case that the impacts of actually uh, of allowing them eye mobility. So let's go one by one. By one. About people losing their job. We think it's like it's, it's completely false. And listen, Nove case actually explained to you why it's false. It tells you it's going to be easier for people to learn why because I can ask the computer to create a video that are especially for me, that can teach me in my language, which I don't have a, 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 maybe a, a, a good a, a explanation in those languages. It can explain to me what I want to learn. It can, uh, I can tell him I don't understand in this way. Please try to explain this in, I don't know, in example about a, a jellyfish because this is what I understand. This means that he can do a specific thing that can help me find the better job, find a, more, a, 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 a job that allows me more money. Even if I lost my job, I can ask him to do this thing, uh, and this will allow me to learn. This means that we are actually making uh, 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 the people uh, much easier to actually find a job, even if they lose them in uh, uh, the simple thing. This means that their case uh, doesn't say we're actually getting uh, 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 more people in jobs. We are doing it for people who lost their job. We are doing it in, in uh, people in countries that are just unable to learn because there are not enough teachers, there are not enough uh, school there, or the language itself isn't uh, good enough. Uh, 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 like the training itself is not in the language they know, and now we can actually do it. Um, um, so, so we're actually increasing their uh, mobility, we're actually increasing their chance to actually get uh, more jobs. Um, great. About, um, uh, uh, um, uh, okay. here I wanted to notice that, oh, just said, yeah, we want people to talk about it, to discuss about it. We think maybe it's, it's, it's nice, but we're not completely sure why discussing something actually creates a solution or why it's going to solve this. Now, face is the only one who actually explained you why we're going to get a solution. Not only maybe we're not going to lose a lot of jobs, but we're actually going to get more jobs. We're going to actually get more training. We're actually going to allow to do it. Um, two? Please explain to us why the government having more control of information is actually bad in this case. Okay, so we think that first it's not only government, it's, a, a like it's a companies that still get uh, this uh, uh, control because it's not only a government, not publicly, is also uh, the companies itself. But we think that also, uh, yeah, there are we, we get uh, uh, governments that want to, uh, for example, uh, like um, uh, the Trump administration, like uh, a chance for uh, companies uh, uh, or governments like in China or in other places that also develop this kind of stuff, to actually use this uh, as a, uh, to harm people, we think that it's better for them to have the ability to do it uh, for themselves. Good. About your case, about uh, uh, the fact that they're going to get mistakes. So, I think uh, this just doesn't stand. Several ways why. First, we think that um, people are going to just learn how to use it in a better way, but more than that, we think that because, as you say, regulation are going to get either way, we are going to get regulation to force this site to actually uh, um, be accurate, yet to look in a specific place, yet to absorb information only from a specific place. We think that uh, uh, more that we actually seen that even in AI today, or even in your level, we actually remove it, okay, we remove it from Wikipedia, we correct it, we run the, the AI again to do a, another train, we think this is something that can only really happen. We think that um, in the important places, you're just going to verify this with a professional because you, you don't want to actually make mistakes. You don't want to kill yourself. You don't want to try to uh, remove your uh, arm or something. So you will check it with someone else. If you can check it with someone else, then nothing changes. You, you, you just, just in search in Google or, or ask advice from your friend, you're going to do something bad. But we think that all of the uh, case is just a very short term, yeah? Because even in the long term, we're going to get better accuracy and better learning. We just win this, uh, this uh, case itself also. Call you to. Uh, we oppose or to support? <laughs> to oppose opposing. To oppose opposing. <laughs>